everyone. I'm Ashni Joshi. Welcome back to another video of Physics Made Easy. Today I'm going to be covering light part two, and this chapter is actually really buggy. So I'm dividing it into three parts so that it's easier for you all to comprehend. So let's get started. Okay, so this is light, and the first topic we're going to be covering today is viewing the moon. So we know that the moon is a non-luminous body. It does not have its own source of light. So how do we see it at night? Why do we say that the moon is lit up? Why does it appear shining bright? There is a reason for this. And the answer is reflection. The process of reflection. The source of light for the moon here is the sun. The sun will emit light which will reach the moon, reflect and reach the earth. So it goes like this and like this, comes back like that. That is how we, that is how the moon reflects the light. And we get to see this reflected light. So technically the moon isn't shining, it's reflecting. And it's reflecting the light from the sun. And since the sun's light is actually white, that's why the moon appears bright. If the sun's light was green, the moon would appear green. If the sun's light was red, the moon would appear red. The moon appears white because, and this is the main evidence that the moon reflects light from the sun. And yes, so let's move on now. Now let's come to these three types of bodies known as transparent bodies, translucent bodies, and opaque bodies. So every time light falls on an object, three things can happen. Either the light passes through it completely, or it only passes partially, or it doesn't pass through at all. And on the basis of these, on the basis of the behavior of such objects, on the basis of the behavior of objects, we classify them as three types of objects. One are transparent, second are translucent, and third are opaque. So transparent objects are essentially objects through which light passes through completely. So a transparent object can be a window pane, it can be spectacle, it can even be the scale that I'm using. Light passes through completely. We can see clearly on the other side of the object. Second category is translucent objects. In translucent objects, the light only passes through partially. They, these objects absorb some of the light, but they let the remaining light pass through. The best example for this is tracing paper. I don't know if you'll ever seen tracing paper. If not, on books, they usually have a cover like this. So this can also be taken as translucent because I can't clearly see everything on the other side of this object, but I can see some part of it. And the last category is opaque objects. These are generally the most common. Every other object you see can be classified as an opaque object. Not that every object is an opaque object, but let's say, even if I'm using this mouse for my presentation right now, that is an opaque object. Even the plant on my table is an opaque object because I can't see everything. I can't see anything actually on the other side of the object. It's blocking all the light. So yeah, that can be considered as an opaque object. Now, let's move on to this another very important concept. The concept that states that light travels in a straight line. Light always travels in a straight line. It's a rule. If there's a tube light in my room, the light from that tube light is not going to travel a zigzag path or a curved path to reach me. It will travel straight paths to reach me. Light always travels from a particular object to our eyes following a straight line path. Even the diagram we see, light in the first one, light from the candle is traveling in a straight path to the observer. In the second one, light from the sun is falling exactly straight on the uh, sea or the ocean. Even right now, if you look outside the window, the light from the sun will travel in an exactly straight line. And this property of, uh, of light to travel in a straight line is called rectilinear propagation of light. <clears throat> now let's come to this another important concept called shadows. 
you must have heard your friends or your family talk about this so what are shadows essentially a shadow is a dark area on a bright surface let's see that again a shadow is a dark area on a bright surface if you look at the first picture you'll get a little idea about it the shadow of these two humans is dark as compared to the rest of the surface but this is not the complete definition for shadow what is a shadow caused by what is it caused due to it is caused by something blocking a source of light if there's a source of light and i block it by my hand or my arm whatever so therefore on the other side of my arm we won't be able to see the source of light falling on the surface where my hand is blocking it because i am blocking the uh, light rays in that specific area if we look at the first diagram then the humans are blocking the sun which is the source of light so therefore at the place where the humans are standing the rays, rays of the sun won't reach so i'm talking essentially this this area and this area where the humans are standing there the sun's light won't be able to reach so this is the dark area but where the humans aren't standing that is this area here this is the bright surface the rays from the sun can reach here so a shadow is a dark area on a bright surface moreover when my hand is blocking a source of light i will only block the source of light in an area which is equal to the area of my hand so a shadow's outline or the silhouette will have the same exact shape as the object blocking the light even in the first diagram or if we take a second diagram we can see that the shadow of the clouds on the mountains is the same exact shape as that of the cloud thank you that was it from light part 2 i hope to see you all again in light part 3 and i hope that you all understood everything in this session so see you later bye